Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeets, and today we're gonna be calculating the net primary productivity of aquatic plants here. So if you're ready to think like a mountain and measure NPP like a scholar, let's get started. So over the summer, College Board came out with this new recommended list of labs for AP Environmental Science. And today we're gonna be going over lab one, which is called an investigation into the net primary productivity of aquatic plants. Now, before we get into this lab today, you need to actually know what NPP is. So if you haven't covered that topic yet in class, or you just want a refresher, make sure to check out my full deep dive video on that topic suggested up in the corner. Now, if you don't have time for that, the 30 second version is that net primary productivity is the rate of energy storage by plants in a given area over a given time after you take away the energy that's lost to cellular respiration. Whereas the total energy that's produced by plants in a given area over a given period of time is known as the gross primary productivity. But just like you have to pay some taxes out of your gross paycheck, plants also have to use up some of the total amount of energy they generate for cellular respiration. So you can think of net primary productivity as the actual leftover energy that plants have after respiration, which they get to store as new biomass. Now, since coming up with a scientific question or a testable hypothesis for a lab is something that you may face on the FRQ section of the exam in May, I like to start out all my labs in class by having my students see if they can come up with the scientific question and a testable hypothesis for the lab that we're about to do. In my class, I like to put the materials and the overview and purpose of the lab on the board and see if students can discuss in groups what the scientific question we may be investigating is or if they can even write their own testable hypothesis. So if you're up for a challenge, see if you can pause the video today and come up with your own scientific question that this lab may be investigating or a testable hypothesis based on the materials and procedures that you can see on the screen. All right, let's see how you did. Because the materials are suggesting that we're gonna have black construction paper and we're gonna be measuring dissolved oxygen throughout this lab, it's a pretty strong indicator that we're gonna have one of the bottles with plants that are not photosynthesizing and one of the bottles with plants that are photosynthesized. But the key here is to remember that plants that are in the dark are still gonna be undergoing cellular respiration, so they will be using up energy and therefore consuming some oxygen along the way. On the other hand, the plants that are in the bottle that's not covered in dark paper are gonna be able to photosynthesize. And so this is gonna help us when we have to calculate the net primary productivity at the end of this lab. So a scientific question we might ask here is, will the plants that are exposed to sunlight produce more oxygen through photosynthesis than they consume through cellular respiration? Or an even simpler question could be, will the plants that are exposed to sunlight produce more oxygen than the plants that are not exposed to sunlight? Now, even though the answer to the second question is gonna be super obvious, I still like the way that it sets us up to practice writing a testable hypothesis using this template, which is increasing or decreasing the independent variable will increase or decrease the dependent variable. So now we can turn that really ridiculously obvious question into a testable hypothesis that still helps us review independent and dependent variables. And in this case, that would be increasing the amount of sunlight that plants are exposed to will increase the rate of photosynthesis or the production of oxygen. And the reason I really like this hypothesis template is it also helps you figure out the independent and dependent variable, which are two more types of questions that you may see on that FRQ section of the exam. But before we get into the variables, the groups, and the constants, I want you to actually see the procedure that's happening so you really have a grasp on what's going on in this lab. So our first step here is to record the dissolved oxygen level of whatever water source that we're starting with. Now, the easiest way to do this is with a dissolved oxygen probe, but you can also use tablets like the ones that come with these Lamont Easy Green testing kit. Then we're gonna add equally sized pieces of our aquatic plant to each bottle. And in this case, my students and I used guppy grass from a local aquarium store. Shout out to Watercolors Aquarium Gallery down on Division Avenue if you happen to be in Grand Rapids. Next, we're gonna fill and seal each bottle underwater and try to limit any air bubbles that might influence the dissolved oxygen level. And finally, we'll cover one of the bottles with dark paper, leave the other bottle uncovered, and let both bottles sit in the window for a period of two to four days. Now, while we wait for our guppy grass to do some photosynthesizing, let's take a minute to review the variables, constants, and controls for this experiment. What I love about the format of these new AP Classroom Labs is that they give you this handy little table that you can fill out to keep track of your variables, groups, and constants for each lab that you do. Now, if you're a teacher watching this video, I'd love to print out little copies of this table and pass them out to students so they can tape it in their notebook every time we do a lab in class. And if you wanna use this table with your students when you do experiments in class, there's a Google Doc in the video description below, all formatted and ready to print. So again, if you're looking for a challenge today, Ape Scholars, go ahead and pause that video now and see if you can fill out the variables, groups, and constants at home. All right, let's see how you did. Since the independent variable is the one that I, the scientist, change or manipulate, in this lab, that's going to be the amount of sunlight that plants have access to. And this word amount is really key. You can't just say sunlight. A variable is something that changes and so you have to use the word amount or level or concentration to indicate that you know that a variable is something that changes. Now, the dependent variable is what depends on the independent variable or changes in response to it. Another way I like to help students remember is that it's the data that's collected, D for data. In this lab, the dissolved oxygen concentration of the water 
is the dependent variable because it changes with response to the amount of sunlight that the plant had. Now your control group in this experiment may differ a little bit depending on your hypothesis. If you went with the simple hypothesis that plants exposed to sunlight will photosynthesize and produce more oxygen than plants that are not exposed to sunlight, your control group would be the plants that are exposed to sunlight since that's the natural unmanipulated condition of plants and therefore your experimental group would be the plants that are not exposed to sunlight in the bottle that's covered with dark construction paper. However, if you had a little more complex question and hypothesis for this lab, more along the lines of the NPP of that bottle that's exposed to the sunlight, then your control group may actually be the initial dissolved oxygen concentrations of the water that you use, whereas your experimental group then would be the final concentrations of the dissolved oxygen in your water. And finally, we do need to review some variables that we held constant in this lab, and those would be things like the amount of water in each bottle, the species of plant used in each bottle, roughly the same size of plant, although that one's subject to a little bit of human air, and then of course the temperature in the surrounding environment around the bottles. Two hours later. So now that we've established a hypothesis and gone over our variables, groups, and constants, as well as waited two days for our guppy grass to get its NPP on, let's get down to practicing some calculations. Now if your class wasn't able to run this experiment or you got data that didn't make any sense, I have the starting dissolved oxygen level for the creek water that my students use, as well as an average of their final dissolved oxygen levels for both their light and dark bottles. Teachers, just a quick note here that if you're using this video with your students, but you wanna perform these calculations as a class, you can pause the video now and just use these sample data to calculate your NPP, GPP, and respiration loss and answer your post-lab questions together. On the other hand, if you want your students to see how to set up these calculations, or if you're a student whose class wasn't able to do this experiment, I'm gonna go through how to set up calculations for NPP, GPP, and respiration loss using these dissolved oxygen data. Now, the key question that you need to ask that the rest of this video is in each bottle, is photosynthesis occurring on its own or is cellular respiration occurring on its own or are both photosynthesis and cellular respiration occurring at the same time? Now, in the dark bottle, all that was happening was cellular respiration since, of course, plants can't photosynthesize in the dark. This means that we can start calculating the respiration rate by subtracting the final dissolved oxygen level in the dark bottle from the initial dissolved oxygen level and dividing that difference by the number of days that we ran the experiment since we want this number as a rate. And when we work through this problem, we can see that our guppy grass was using up 0.8 milligrams of oxygen per liter of water per day for cellular respiration. All right, if you're feeling like you've got the hang of this, go ahead and pause the video, see if you can figure out which numbers to use here to set up a calculation that will allow you to find the net primary productivity. All right, let's see how you did. Find net primary productivity, we need the difference between the initial dissolved oxygen level and the final dissolved oxygen level for the light bottle. And that's because this change in dissolved oxygen reflects all of the oxygen produced through photosynthesis minus what the plant used for respiration. So if we plug in our initial and final DO levels for the light bottle and divide by the two days we ran this experiment, we'll see that the NPP of the guppy grass was 1.1 milligrams of oxygen per liter per day. And finally, if we want to determine the gross primary productivity or GPP of our guppy grass, we can just rearrange our initial equation of NPP equals GPP minus RL by adding RL to both sides. This will allow us to get GPP by itself so we can just plug in the NPP and RL values we already calculated earlier in the video and solve for GPP. So if we add our NPP of 1.1 milligrams per liter per day with our respiration rate of 0.8 milligrams per liter per day, what we'll see is that the total photosynthetic rate or the gross primary productivity of our guppy grass was 1.9 milligrams of oxygen per liter per day. And hey, that's a lot of work for a little alliterative aquatic autotroph like guppy grass. All right, sorry, done with literary devices for today. If you're doing this lab as a class, you can convert this photosynthetic rate to a rate of carbon production by the plant along with a whole host of other scintillating discussion questions but i'm gonna leave that to you and your teacher thanks so much for watching today everybody if you're a student and you have questions about how to calculate npp gpp or respiration rate go ahead and leave those in the comment section down below if you're a teacher and you have questions about how to run this lab feel free to leave those questions down in the comment section too but whatever you do next remember to always think like a mountain and calculate npp like a scholar